Guys, if you had to say that there was a bad guy in the NBA right now, who would it be? Who's the guy everyone loves to hate now? It seems to me it's Dylan Brooks. Draymond. No, I think it's Dylan Brooks. The thing with Draymond, though, is he got four chips. So at the end of the day, he's like, you can hate all you want. Look. I mean, what is Dylan? I mean, Dylan Brooks has made a name for himself, but it, it's probably just Dylan Brooks. Yeah, he's Dylan notorious. He, he's got notoriety. It's not just that he's known now. He's known for a bad thing. Key, when you chirp like that and your stat line is seven points, two rebounds, zero assists, 23% shooting from the field and one ejection. <laughs> what I tell you last week, What though, you going to do? I, the first thing I said, LeBron ain't got to say none of that dude, man. You, come on. I don't even need to have a conversation about you at all. Everybody knows what you are. Everybody knows what I am at the end of the day. You know, when you – when you usually, though, Jay, guys like Dylan Brooks, they game really don't match their mouth, no matter what sport it is. Dudes that just be, like, acting like that, they don't really get down that way. Yo, but Key, real talk, I'm going to tell you something. Like, if you ever watch Dylan Brooks shoot, it pains me sometimes. Like, it pains me because, like, it, it, here, pull the camera back on me, though, because you can see, like, most players, when they shoot, the ball stays here in their pocket, right? It goes up like this. This dude brings the ball down here. I, I mean, he'll catch the ball here and then bring it down here and go up every time. It is one of the most <laughs> painful things for a guy that, you know, like, if you just add shooting to your game, if you became more consistent with that, your game is, like, wasted motion. You would be so much better. But you take 11 shots in the in – the, in, in the, quarter you're like what are you doing man exactly, you're not him like that that's exactly why he's not better is because he but doesn't he also, shoot it consistently he, enough you know he got caught up though Jay so when you get caught up you you going against LeBron James so you getting caught up you now thought that you was psychologically getting ready to fake him out but you done faked yourself out by doing what you did the last game well let's so talk now about you put that. this pressure hmm. on yourself to a point where now you got to try to prove you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. so now you out there you, man, what what they call it? Self check. Yep. He yeah, you out there. He, yeah. yeah, you self checking, man. We we good. Let him shoot again. You so, know, let him let him shoot again. All right, just move out. Let him go. Oh well, he's gonna miss that. Let's, one. let's explain go. to people, Key, what happened here. Okay, so LeBron said something to Dylan Brooks before this game, and Dylan Brooks is guarding LeBron and looks like he's reaching for the ball, but hits LeBron center groin. <laughs> And LeBron goes down and is demonstrative about the kind of pain he's in. And considering James Harden was ejected the other night, ejected. There's a flagrant two immediately gone. Dylan Brooks was also hit with a flagrant two. Question is, should he have been suspended? Draymond was suspended. Or is this LeBron setting him up and milking it? Well, Here's it doesn't remember it goes back to it doesn't go it goes back to game three. It yep. goes back to game three, not game. I mean, it goes back to game two, right? Yeah, it goes back to game two when they had their little confrontation. Yeah, for sure. Originally. Here's Dylan Brooks at the post-game presser talking about um, how the how previous things in these playoffs, not even involving these teams, could have affected the call on him. Listen. I didn't even focus on that. I knew I wasn't going to be, you know, they can't dictate the series like that. You know, um, and, you know, Mark probably had to call that because of what happened yesterday with James Harden. And that's just unfair, you know, um, and I get penalized and, you know, I can't help my team, you know, try to make a comeback in the second half. I'm about to open it up on this one. So that sound was from yesterday after practice. Dylan Brooks did not speak to the media oh, pardon, pardon, after the game, right. yep. which I think is bogus, and I hate when players do that. Regardless of win or lose, talk to the media. Talk to the media, especially after you gave them the time with your shades on and your huge chain on and you're talking about <laughs> LeBron sucks and he's old. You gave them your time there, then you got your head busted in. Give them your time after you got your head busted in. That's number one. Number two, like when it, when it comes to this whole thing, like which – frustrates me sometimes about Dylan Brooks it's just and actually before I even go there I don't think he should have gotten ejected for that I agree I, I don't think he should have gotten ejected for that and that, that's where key you know uh, talking to NBA officials over the weekend and I, I talked to a couple they, a lot of them were giving me insight to well if the action like Joel Embiid there was a kick but the kick didn't land 
on the family jewels. It landed on the thigh. And we're asked to be precise in our job. So we have to be precise about where the contact actually occurs. So in their reasoning, they're saying, well, the preciseness of the hit landed on the jewel aspect of LeBron James. Okay. But if you watch the play over, it, don't, it looks as if Dylan Brooks is reaching in with his inside hand as LeBron is shifting angles, right? This is kind of like a, called a turn drill as you do, you know, when you're in high school or college, you're trying to turn somebody multiple times before they get to half court. So that's where the reach looks like it comes into me. So I actually, for and I get the track record, so I, I understand the reasoning, but that didn't warrant an ejection to me. Uh, agreed. Yeah, I don't did, think that, Harden's that, did either. You know how I, I, I work I, in this industry, but you know how I feel about it doing my playing career, man. Sometimes people set a narrative, even though you bring a lot of it on yourself sometimes based on your attitude and some of the things that come out your mouth, but they set a certain precedent narrative about who you are and people kind of follow it, believe it. So I'm not going to say he's completely wrong. I'm really not, but you know, I'm all, I'm all team LeBron on this one. I, I mean, I, I, I get what, what Dylan's trying to trying to say. And I think there are examples key. You and I both have seen where if the media or certain individuals in the media don't like certain people, it carries a lot of weight because it creates narratives with people who don't get a chance to do a lot of their homework and they just take it for the grain of salt of what it is. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I think you need to do things to counter those narratives. And I think Dylan leans into those narratives like, that's a part of his persona that makes him stand out. Like, he is the guy that does the dirty work. Dylan Brooks does lead the NBA in technical fouls. Like, there are multiple examples of things that he has said post game that make you look at Dylan saying, okay, you do kind of fit that villain like character because your offensive game isn't like that. So, you have to do things to muck up the game yeah. to make your name stand out and to make your game go to the next level. So there is an aspect of that but for Dylan Brooks. But there's – and Max and I, we've talked about this, and you too, Jay, just – but we've talked about it off air, whatever the case may be. There's certain words that people use to describe individuals that are hustle faces like Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks is a hustle face to me, which means that he doesn't have an offensive game. He just plays everything hustle. He's the guy who – who's going to get in somebody's face, rattle them, have them thinking about them. And people use a certain word. It's almost like, uh, what's my man in Chicago uh, that was with the Clippers and got traded? Uh, little guard, Jay. Pat Bev? Pat, Pat Bev. Bev. Yeah. It's almost like Pat Bev, right? He's 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 got a certain edge to him, and people want to always make it seem like he's the, the villain type guy. Well, that's just who he is. He can't change that. But then there's certain words that are used when people are talking about you, writing about you, that describe you in a certain way that sticks in people's minds in the media to form an opinion about who you are. And I'm not taking up for Dylan Brooks. I just know, having lived it personally in my own career, how those narratives are shaped just based on how you approach the game in the way you approach it is different than the way people think you should approach the game when they're writing about you. That's just that's just me, though. That's just the I, way I look at it. I got, I got a theory about this. I want to see what you guys think. And I'm not suggesting this is the main thing driving it, but I think it has a huge part of it, and, and people don't realize. When you don't shoot it well, like imagine if Russell Westbrook had a real good outside shot. You would hear hardly, you would hear a little fraction of what you've heard about him throughout his career. Imagine if Dylan Brooks was just stroking it from outside, like he was killing it 42%. Your whole thought, because what you mentioned, Key, is hustle face, right? Like he doesn't really have an offensive game. You don't have to have post moves and all this stuff. If you can just, not just D, but three and D, if you could hit the outside shot, the whole feeling of the kind of player you are is different. The fact that, as you said, Jay, his shot is broken, right, kind of contributes to that because it's like you just get a negative association with the guy, and then you realize, as Key said, that the only thing he can do is get under people's skin and defend and everything, and it, and it helps make him available. I, I think much more of the way people feel about players is based on whether they hit shots or not.
I don't know about that. I mean, Trey Young makes a lot of shots, but, I mean, he's not seen as, like, Dylan Brooks, but there is that aspect of it. CP3, until lately, I mean, he was kind of seen. He did a lot of, you know, we talk about tapping people where you shouldn't tap. He's done a lot of, with an open hand, he's done some closed hand ones. Yeah, it's but not the only malicious. thing. So, yeah. like, there's aspects he wanted of it. A, but he wanted the greatest guards to ever play, yeah. though. So no, I, but, but Key, I, I'm, I, what narratives have been about, some players, even though they are considered one of the greatest guards, that it has been a little bit of that. Too. In terms of the media playing a major role in why people look at him the way that they do and why he was eventually ejected from the game. I didn't hear the whole sound key, but like, oh. correct. Congratulations. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't think. Here's the thing about the media. The media can't straight up make up something if you don't give them some of the ingredients, right? right. Like, maybe yeah. the cake is more elaborate. It's a five-layer cake, and perhaps your ingredients were like a Betty Crocker box pound cake, but, like, you started <laughs> it, bro. Like, what do you mean? I don't think Dylan has to be honest about what he said on the microphone, how he's behaved in games, and I think it's actually interesting because you think about Draymond, and I think over the summer he may have sat down with Taylor Rooks, and he talked about kind of the toll of being the villain. So I understand that Dylan may be having a, a look in the mirror sort of moment, but like, dude, you started this. Should he have even been ejected for no. that? No. To me, if it's a okay, you want to give him a flagrant one? All right. But it's it's not much different than what James Harden did, and James Harden shouldn't have been tossed out of that game. But I think it's all crazy in the playoffs right now, though, Jay, with the referees, right? They just it's so much hostility going on between refs and players based on these playoffs. In this particular playoffs, different obviously different teams, but it's something, whether it's the Golden State, whether it's the Sixers, whether it's the the, the Lakers, it's all this chippiness that's going on. So the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to try to get control of the situation yeah. before it gets out of control. He, I, think, you know, I think that's the message. You know what the lesson learned is here, right, Key? Mm-mm. You're going to uh, tell me. Yeah, you, you can kick somebody in the jewels. You just, you know, you just can't hit them with your hand. Wait, you but can, Embiid missed. Can, Wasn't that a – But that goes – so I had a conversation but, with but the ref again, over the again, weekend. But the intent, right? So I had a conversation with the ref over the weekend. He's like, but, Jay, our whole job is described to be precise, mm-hmm. right? Precision is key. So if we're looking at all aspects of the hit, where you get hit matters. Sure. But I'm like, but how do you determine whether it's a thigh or something? I, I don't know. But look, Jay, so here's how I look at he's it. He's been a- in locker rooms and showers before he's seen. What do you mean? What? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to locker rooms and showers. What the hell's wrong with you? Anyway, um, if you look at it, though, <laughs> in the guys that was all suspended or kicked out of the game, so to speak, mm-hmm. Look at the action of the player who got hit. Every last one of them. Okay, so the Joker, let's start that. Not the Joker. Uh, so you're throwing Rose O'Neal? Oh, Sabonis. So, yeah, Sabonis. Let's look at the action of Sabonis. Oh, my chest. Right? Yeah. So that's one. Boom. Royce O'Neal saying falls to the ground. Oh, you did me wrong. Yeah. Now you look at LeBron. <laughs> you oh, God, you did me wrong. So, and then you look at the NB situation. That was more of a, okay, we're going to fight now. We gonna, I'm, I'm not hurt. But Nick Claskin fell down. I, I mean, think, think Claskin, fight, but he fell down, but he didn't get shot. Yeah, but, right, but he wasn't only giving you a, a, a flagrant two based upon the way you react. Look, look at LeBron. Like, LeBron. If, Wait, if somebody could take a punch, gurney, than other people the can. The journey is coming out for LeBron right now. Was it Bon Temp? Someone was on this show talking about how what the incentives are, right? You look in soccer. The reason there's so much flopping is because it gets rewarded. And for years in this country, we made fun of soccer players flopping. But if if the if you start enforcing rules in a way that rewards these giant acts, you know, where people are, or it seems exaggerating how hurt they are, if that's rewarded, but then of course really, people are going to do that. But you can't tell if somebody's really hurt. Right, though, but that's man. why you should. That's, that's why, why you should be so o- fast to throw them out at, of the game. But look, but look at O'Neal. He gets hit. And oh. when you get hit, man, that thing goes into the stomach Key, and course. it does not feel And it gets good. worse and worse and worse. And it gets worse. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. I understand a flagrant one, tee him up. But when you toss a guy from a game, you are incentivizing the other guy who gets hit or maybe nearly hit in that spot to put on a big show, right? That's why they got to be careful with how liberally they just give out these kind of severe punishments because what you're the, the, the message you're sending is, let me see the Academy Award performance. They do be giving it a performance. I, I, I believe LeBron. I believe LeBron felt the pain. I do. Did he milk it? On, that looked like that hurt, man. What, what do you mean, did he milk it? 
Well, he right. was getting ready to bring out the gurney, man. And yeah, the rest right, of the, right, right, Come right. on, man. Amulet, man, 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 come on, man. They was getting ready to bring it out. And by the way, it extends past the game. Sabonis got x-rayed, and then Draymond Green got x-rayed. Come on. They're going to be coming Sabon- out the well, next Draymond game. Green Body like Jay said, with the x-ray, he talking about he's going to get x-rays the next possession. He was dunking the basket. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Right. <laughs> and he started the next game. <laughs> Uh, Dylan Brooks, by the way, talked about whether or not he's going to be uh, suspended after the game. Listen. I didn't even focus on that. I knew I wasn't going to be, you know, they can't dictate the series like that, you know. Um, and, you know, Mark probably had to call that because of what happened yesterday with James Harden. And that's just unfair, you know. Um, and I get penalized and. You know, I can't help my team, you know, try to make a comeback in the second half. So that was way after the game. That was uh, Sunday, not uh, – but he anyway. Did, if he just but, but Keith, game, so he real quick, back anyway. it, the bigger deal that's about to happen, though, guys, is they have one game off – one day off between games now. And the schedule is, you know, it, it goes Memphis, L.A., back to Memphis. Those are NBA finals-like miles to travel for games. So the bigger question is who does that favor – does it favor the younger legs of Memphis, even with John ja Morant being slightly hurt, dropping 45, or the older legs in the more experienced Los Angeles Lakers? So it go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, man. Quick. Meantime, it seems the but rest night, are sending a message. Friday night in L.A. That traveling uh, they're is going to penalize people yeah, who traveling uh, in, a, in luxury. They're all right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.